Hey everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to be going over hypermagnesiemia. In the previous video I covered hypomagnesiemia, so in this video I want to highlight the causes, the signs and symptoms, and the nursing interventions with some clever mnemonics on how to remember them. Then I'm going to hit the highlights of things that you need to know for the NCLEX exam and for your nursing lecture exams. Now after this video please go to my website registerednursern.com to take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on the difference between hypomagnesiemia and hypomagnesiemia magnesiemia. So let's get started. Okay, whenever I have these big words, of course, I always like to take them apart and see which electrolyte we're talking about. Is it high? Is it low? So the first part of this word is hyper, and it means excessive. Next is magnes, and that is the prefix for magnesium, and emia, which is the which means blood. So the meaning is you put it all together, you get high magnesium in the blood. Now, what is a normal magnesium level? Because exams love to throw out figures and ask you what's up with this patient. You have to know if it's normal or not. A normal mag level is 1.6 to 2.6, and anything greater than 2.6 is considered hypermagnesiemia. Okay, let's talk about the role of mag in the level in the body. Because in order to truly understand these causes and these signs and symptoms, you have to know how it works and then it all makes sense. So how does mag work in the body? It plays a huge role in transferring and storing energy in the cell. Huge cell function. It regulates the parathyroid hormone, which is responsible for calcium levels in the body and it metabolizes your carbs, fats, and proteins, and regulates blood pressure. Now, where is this electrolyte absorbed? It is absorbed in the small intestine. So anything that causes any malabsorption issues, anything like that can throw off your mag levels. And it's excreted in the kidneys. So if you have any renal issues, anything like that, you can either waste too much magnesium or you can keep too much magnesium. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So those two things play a huge role. And magnesium. Okay, so what are the causes of hypermagnesiemia? Okay, key thing to remember with this is the three little word mag. Now, ma high mag levels are not very common. It's a lot less common than hypomagnesiemia, which is what we covered in the video before. Typically, whenever a patient is going into hypermagnesiemia, it is probably due because they are already hypo, meaning they were low in mag, and you maybe started magnesium sulfate, and it quickly increased in the mag levels too much where we didn't want them, and we sent them into hypermagnesiemia. So that's why whenever you're administering mag, magnesium sulfate, you need to be watching those mag levels closely, their deep tendon reflexes, things like that. But some other causes um, that Tess loved to hit on this, the first part of MAG is M, magnesium containing antacids and laxatives. So um, say that the patient is in renal failures and they're keeping all this magnesium, which we'll get to G here in a second, which is talking about kidney failure, and they're, they have some stomach issues. So they want to take maybe some Mylanta or Maalox, which is a magnesium containing antacid. This is not a good idea because these antacids contain magnesium and their kidneys aren't going to excrete it properly and they're going to keep magnesium in their body and it's going to shoot those levels up. So remember that. A, any patients who have Addison's disease, which is an adrenal insufficiency, can increase mag. Um, G for glomular filtration in insufficiency. This is a fancy word for renal failure. They usually have um, a filtration less than 30 milliliters per minute. And what's happening is that the kidneys are just conserving, just keeping too much magnesium. So those are the causes of hypermagnesiemia. Now what are the signs and symptoms? How are these patients going to look and present? And things you need to know for an exam. Okay, let's think back to hypomagnesiemia in the previous video. Remember everything was excited. It was 
twitching. That was the mnemonic we remembered for that. It was going crazy. Now, in this, everything is lethargic. It's every system of the body is just tired. So remember the term lethargic. Now, patients who do have high magnesium levels, you're not going to see these signs and symptoms unless it's really severe. Patients who normally just have a moderate, a mild case, they're going to have no symptoms. They're going to be asymptomatic. So whenever you have severe case, this is what you're going to have. L for lethargic, you're going to have L lethargy. This is just going to be really profound. They're going to be really weak. E, EKG changes. Remember, this is, this is another thing that tests like to hit on. They will have a PR and a QT interval that is prolonged in a wide QRS complex. T for tendon reflexes, diminished or absent. Commit this to memory. This is another important thing. Remember in hypomagnesemia, these reflexes were very hyperactive. Here, they're diminished or absent. You're not going to have any. H for hypotension. Remember, uh, magnesium regulates blood pressure. So you'll have low blood pressure. A for arrhythmias. The patients could have uh, bradycardia, which is a slow heart rate. Remember, everything's tired and lethargic. So low, slow, um, slow heart rate or a heart blocks. R for respiratory arrest, they can all of a sudden just go into this. G, uh, GI issues like nausea and vomiting makes them really sick. I for impaired breathing, this is due to the weakness of the skeletal muscle, muscles, which help us breathe, breathe in and out, um, which can cause respiratory arrest. And C, cardiac arrest, all of a sudden they can just go into a lethal rhythm. Okay, the nursing interventions, this is the big thing hit on exams, so you want to remember this stuff. Okay, first you want to monitor the patient's cardiac, respiratory, neuro, GI, and renal status because all of these systems are affected by the low, I mean the high magnesium levels. Um, also, place the patient on a cardiac monitor to look for those EKG changes that we talked about earlier. Ensure that the patient is safe, they're not going to get hurt or injured because they're lethargic, they're drowsy, they're not themselves. Um, and you want to really prevent this because there's not a lot of causes of things that can cause this unless you're giving them too much magnesium, things like that. So like I said earlier, if the patient's in renal failure and they're having upset stomach and they want something for it, be sure not to give them or watch out for anything that is a magnesium containing antacid or laxative because this will increase their mag levels. And if the patient it was in hypomagnesiemia and they're receiving magnesium sulfate, make sure that you're watching their mag levels, you're assessing those deep tendon reflexes, because all of a sudden, if you see that those deep tendon reflexes are gone or they're really diminished, you probably have a magnesium problem and you'll want to catch it early. And discourage and do not let the patient eat foods that are high in magnesium. And you want to remember foods that are high in magnesium because a lot of tests love to ask you, give you a scenario and say, which food should the patient not eat? So um, here's this little phrase that can help you remember foods that are high in magnesium. Remember the phrase, always get plenty of foods containing large numbers of magnesium. And each letter correlates with the food, A for avocado, G for green leafy vegetables. This is like kale, spinach, things like that. P for peanut butter pork, O for oatmeal, F for fish, which is like canned tuna, mackerel, C for cauliflower or chocolate, specifically dark chocolate, L for legumes, N for nuts, O for oranges, and M for milk. And some other things, um, the doctor may order some uh, loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics because they waste uh, magnesium. And But this will not be ordered in a patient with renal failure because they're already not putting out urine and you don't want to stress the kidneys out by giving them diuretics. And remember, in hypomagnesiemia, we actually... Um, this was a cause of low mag because these drugs waste magnesium. Okay, and if the patient is in renal failure, the doctor may prescribe for them to get some dialysis to get some of that magnesium off. And sometimes doctors order IV calcium, which will help reverse the effects of magnesium. And if that is the case, watch out for um, infiltration because this stuff is really hard on the tissue. And a lot of times it's preferred to give in a central line rather than an IV line. Okay, so that is a little bit about hypermagnesiemia. Now go to my website, registerednursern.com, and take the free quiz that will test your knowledge on hypo and hypermagnesiemia. And thank you so much for watching. And please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel.